Suspension forks work really well in a variety of conditions, but the key as always is to look after them and maintain them. Now in Ask GMBN Tech, we quite often get asked a question actually about fork suck down, what it is, what happens when your fork sucks down and how to cure the problem. So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Okay, so there are two main issues that can happen on air suspension forks. Bear in mind that the air chamber is inside the upper leg, so that's known as the stanchion tube. Now, what can happen, uh, firstly, you get the thing known as atmospheric pressure. Now, this will happen maybe on long descents or a high altitude where air finds its way into the lower leg. Now, you can purge this out by putting a cable tie very delicately on the inside of the seal on those legs, and that will let that out. But also, you can get air build up in there if, for example, you have a scratch internally on one of the components, perhaps on the air shaft, which I'll show you in a minute, or on the inside of the stanchion tube. Now, if you have a scratch there, air can find its way into the lowers. Now, that is something that you're going to need to get serviced and potentially repaired. However, for the one that tends to happen to most people, that is classic suck down. Now, what really happens in suck down is essentially the negative air chamber gets overcharged and the fork pulls itself down. So whatever the readout is saying on the fork, you're left with loads of air in the wrong place and the fork is shortened. And if you depress the air from the main positive chamber, it doesn't really do anything. So I'm gonna try and simulate that to show you how to alleviate that problem. Now it's based around a fork lower leg service. So if you wanna do that, whole lower leg service. There's gonna be a link underneath this. You can follow that whole principle. We're gonna fast track the first part of this process just to show you what you need to do if your fork has got that. And I'm gonna show you where it happens internally so you can identify that yourself and hopefully not suffer that same problem because it's very simple and really it tends to be a blob of grease that can have that effect on a suspension fork. Nothing to do with a fork, just a bit of good old grease that can cause a problem. Now for this job, I'm using a Fox 34. Um, the principle is the same on any air leg suspension fork. Sometimes the air leg is on the left, some is on the right. With the RockShox fork, you will need Allen keys to remove the foot bolts. On a Fox fork, it's nuts you need to remove. Uh, but again, the principle is very similar. On a Fox fork, you don't need circlip pliers, whereas on a RockShox fork, you will need some circlip pliers. So here is the selection of the likely tools you're gonna to need to do this job on your fork at home. You're gonna need a shock pump. You're gonna need a soft ended mallet or rubber mallet, something like that. Potentially an adjustable spanner and a cassette tool if you have a RockShox fork or some correct sockets for your fork if you have a Fox fork. Various Allen keys to suit you're gonna to need to remove the rebound dial that's on the base of the leg to get access to either the nuts or the bolts, depending on what model your fork is. And you're gonna need a selection of other things, including some suspension grease, some lower leg lube. Of course, you're gonna need some rubber nitrile gloves because it's very slippy stuff to hold onto. You'll need some old faithful shop towel to do a bit of clearing up. Some isopropyl alcohol or perhaps disc brake cleaner is a good idea to clean the fork lowers with afterwards. And as you can see here, I've got a couple of metal cups here just to catch the oil that's gonna be in the fork when I take them apart. And that way I can take that oil to be recycled. So, okay, this is an air tube from a RockShox fork, but fundamentally they do, they do the same job and they have the same features. So you have to imagine that this component is on the inside of the leg here and is basically attached to the base of the stanchion. Now this will be on the inside of the stanchion tube. Now, in the stanchion tube, you inflate positive air into the top and the negative air has to find its way into that chamber. There's a dimple on the inside, that's known as a transfer port. Now, if that transfer port gets blocked with grease, which is the prime candidate, perhaps someone's been overzealous just blobbing a load of grease in the top cap when putting it on, no bad thing, of course, but if it finds its way and blocks that port, it doesn't equalize correctly. And what will happen is there'll be too much pressure in that negative chamber, and that will shorten your fork, and it'll also mean when you take the fork apart, this part becomes very hard to take out because there's pressure that you have to overcome in order to pop it out. And then, of course, you're gonna have to re-grease it and stuff, and I'll show you where to look for damage if you do need to replace any components. On the RockShox one, the likely things to be damaged, if anything, would be this rubber O-ring here, this quad seal on the top, or indeed there could be a scratch on the leg allowing air to get to the wrong place. These are all replaceable parts and it's a perfectly common thing to see in a service. So if that's the case, just check that out. Now let's get involved, we'll pull it apart, we'll fast track this, and I'll show you how to take that air leg out of the fork. First up is rubber gloves on. Obviously you've noticed I've got the fork off the bike. It does make it a lot easier. You don't have to do that, but it does make things much easier. And you also might notice I'm using a work stand 
for this. Work stands don't just have to be used to hold your bike, they're really useful for working on suspension forks and other items because you can clamp them nice and securely without risking any damage. So of course you want to make sure there's no air in the positive chamber first, which is the one that you inflate on the top of the fork. And of course, as with anything along this sort of process, you want to make sure you put a bit of shop towel out, lay all the components down on your worktop, and that way when you go to reassemble, you'll know you're doing it in the correct order and you haven't left anything out. Also means that mess can drip onto it, so you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. So first up, I'm just going to make sure the positive chamber is completely empty of air. So there we go. So fairly good. There's nothing left in that. Now, first part of the process will be to remove that from the fork, in which case it's a socket on this Fox 34. So it's a 28 millimeter socket. The most important thing, no matter what tool you use, if you can use a socket, make sure it's got a flat edge on it. That way it won't damage the fork top cap. If you have a RockShox fork, the same thing applies, although more recent forks do tend to have the cassette tool indentations on the top, which is a really nice addition and does mean there's even less chance of slipping and damaging anything. So as I say, top cap comes off nice and simple. Then you move on to the foot of the forks in which case the first thing to do will be take off the rebound knob and then you'll have access to the two nuts on the bottom. Now, of course, with any fork lower leg service, don't take the bolts or nuts completely off and use the Allen key or the socket just to shock them, just to make sure that the, uh, basically the fork lowers are not stuck on the ends of the rods on the inside. Don't take much, just a, a little tap and that should suffice. Here and there, if you haven't done this for a very long time, you might need a few hits, but of course, be delicate, make sure you use the right tools. There you go, I felt that come away on the inside. Now next step is, as I remove these and I slide the lowers off, some oil is gonna drip out, so I'm actually gonna prepare for that in advance by making sure I can catch that oil and then I can get that recycled later on. It shouldn't be a problem. Now on any suspension fork, you'll have what's known as a crush washer. At the bottom, you get these whether you have nuts on a Fox fork or bolts on a RockShox fork. Every time you strip your fork, you really should replace the crush washers because the whole point is to crush and form a seal there. So they're not really a reusable part, although you can, if you absolutely have to, get away with doing that. Okay, so lower legs off and you can already see here where part of the problem is. This is the air leg, this is the damper leg. The damper leg, as you'd imagine, you can slide it in and out and there's just a resistance of the amount of damping that's on there and nothing else. The air leg on a fork that wouldn't have a problem would be extended at this point and you could freely move it up and down. So I can move it, but there's resistance to stop me pulling it out. Now that is, you've got to imagine this is a RockShox one, but it's the same concept. On the inside here, this is what you have. Okay, so this attaches to the base of the fork and this part here is charged with air. So therefore, trying to pull it out, you're actually going against the air pressure here. So it becomes very difficult to do this. Now, on some models of forks, you don't have, um, basically you don't have the air leg that looks like this at the bottom and you can actually push it through straight into the inside of the air leg to get around this. But when it's like this, you're gonna have to just pull it out. Now before you do that, you need to remove either the circlip or the little retaining clip like on the Fox Fork that's in place. Okay, so this is the bit where it gets tricky. Grease can fly everywhere around the workshop. So again, there's no top cap on the fork. So in theory, there is no pressure there to stop it. We just know that there's negative pressure there. So I'm gonna put the rag here and I need to basically just give it a big old tug and hopefully it's gonna come out. Although this can take a few goes. God. Oh man. God. No, I can't get it. Oh, whew, there we go. So, as you can see, there's a huge blob of grease on the end of there. And I bet money, if I look down the inside of that leg, I'm gonna see a load more grease. Um, whilst it's essential for putting forks together, sometimes it can end up in the wrong place, which is what's happened in this case. Okay, that actually came out fairly easily, but I've done one a while ago that it take two of us to actually get the thing out, so it can be quite forceful. Um, next job is to clean up, inspect that quad seal, inspect the actual leg, make sure there's no scratches on it, and again, the inside, give it a full clean and a rebuild. Okay, so we've cleaned it out. As you could see, there was a lot of grease on the inside. And with it clean, you can actually see, if you look very carefully, you look at the little dimple 
That is the transfer port, and essentially that is what allows the air to travel between the positive and the negative chambers. That is the key to these new style air springs working on both RockShox and Fox Forks and many others, in fact. So if that is blocked up or grease gets in the way, it doesn't allow the air to transfer properly, you can get these problems. So when you put your fork back together, uh, just before you do it, make sure you inspect the inside of that leg and make sure there's no other scratches or damage other than that small dimple. That's the only thing that should be in there, which is also why when you're cleaning the forks, you should only just put shop towel on the inside and use whatever you need to to clean the inside. Don't put any foreign objects in there. Don't force any Allen keys in there, anything that could scratch the internal surfaces because they can lead to similar problems in future. Okay, so everything is clean and we've seen that it's not damaged. So just a small amount of grease on there, the same on that quad seal there, just enough to enable it to pass freely and the same on the O-ring around the bottom. And then carefully, you wanna slide this back into the leg. Just wanna make sure it passes in there nice and smoothly, no sort of hindrance. Pop that back into place. As you heard it go then, there's a washer on the Fox Fork that goes on first push that into place, and then that retaining clip goes in. On the RockShox fork, you'll need to get the circuit pliers out here, and you'll find it's the same on many other brand of forks. Now I just wanna make sure that that passes through smoothly. Very nice, and as you can see, it's fully extended now, so we know that there is no problem with the air in the wrong place, at least at this stage of putting it back together. Just before you put the lower legs back on, you need to put your top cap back on, so I'm just putting a small amount of grease just around the threads there, just to make sure I can screw it into place nice and smoothly. And you will need to put some pressure in. It doesn't need too much. The reason for that is you want to make sure that that air leg is extended so it can meet with basically the holes in the bottom of the forks in order to put the nuts back on and secure it. Just remember, you just need a small amount of grease just under those seals to uh, keep them protected and help them to slide onto the fork legs in the first place. Some people like to um, slide the garter seals on first, these little garter spring rings, but uh, I find if you're careful, it slides on nicely. Now just very carefully, you don't want to scratch anything. Pass the lowers onto the outers there. Line them up, and there we go, and slide them through. Now just make sure that the, uh, they line up with the holes at the bottom. You'll find there'll be a little click, there you go, and you can see them in place. Just before that, you wanna make sure you put the correct amount of lower leg lube into the lowers. It differs on all forks. As I mentioned earlier, um, ideally you wanna be putting fresh crush washers on. When you do this, they really don't cost a lot. We're talking about a few pence. So um, if you like tinkering with your forks, it's a good idea to have a few spares like seals, foam wipers, uh, anything like that, crush washers, etc. Now just be careful not to cross thread anything and make sure you stick to the manufacturer's torque settings for these lower bolts. Of course, it varies on different forks. There's so many on the market now. It's very easy to get that information from your manufacturer's catalog, but just take a bit of care. Uh, so there we go, uh, that's basically it. Again, the most important thing is keep them clean. Make sure there's no scratches or damage to any of those seals. They're just seals at the end of the day. They're not invincible, so air can get past them sometimes. What you need to do now is reinflate your fork and fit it to your bike, or perhaps the opposite way around. However you do it, do take care to make sure you adhere to your manufacturer's guidelines on how you charge that negative chamber. Now, on some forks, you'll fit uh, perhaps half the recommended air pressure for your weighting, and you'll compress the fork a number of times, and then the air will transfer into that lower part of the leg. And then, of course, you'll need to reinflate again in the positive part, and then it should be good. Again, the emphasis on this is make sure your forks are maintained, keep them clean, look after them, learn how to do a lower leg service. It's really quite simple and it's nothing to be afraid of. Just make sure you've got the correct tools. Oh, there you go. That's really all there is to it. It's something that can happen just from a blob of grease or it could happen perhaps if you've got a scratch or something that's happened over the duration of owning the fork. For a couple more videos on suspension, click up here if you want to see Henry strip down a RockShox fork in real time and talk you through all of that stuff. And click down here if you want to do a fork lower leg service. Uh, I recommend everyone learn how to do that. It's very simple, nothing to be afraid of, and your fork will be in tip top condition. As always, give us a thumbs up here at GMBN Tech, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. Cheers, guys.